If we turn to uh, Isaiah 55. Which is on page 997. In my <laughs> I don't know why I think that's funny, but I do. I think I say it almost every time that I'm up here. So I apologize if, if you guys keep... <laughs> But I appreciate your courtesy chuckles while well, people are turning. <clears throat> Isaiah 55. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me, here and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, the sure mercies of David. Whenever I start reading Isaiah, I never know where to stop because he just keeps going, you know, like six or seven books are all one paragraph. But. So anyway, this I think gives us a little bit more um, uh, idea. Um, when, whenever we talk about, you know, Come to the water, all you who thirst, all those who are heavy laden. You know, that's a, a, I think that's, Jesus says that. It's a very common association that we have with, with, um, with preachers and, and, you know, the gospel message. Come to me and, and I will give you rest. You know, and, and so I'll, I, I think a lot of us are very familiar with the, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. There's another song about that that I also like. It's got a different chord progression in there that I just think is kind of fascinating. But, um, you know, it, we're, we're familiar with that idea, um, and, and that's, I, I don't think anybody would be um, quarrel with me if I were to say that that is us coming to Jesus and looking to Him and having a relationship with Him. And so, very naturally, we go right into, you who have no money, come buy and eat. So, if you're thirsty, you don't have any water, so come to the waters, come to Jesus. If you don't have any money, come buy and eat. Um, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. So these things are free gifts and so you are, you are giving something and receiving them. And the thing that you're giving is the act of coming to Jesus and, and to fellowshipping with Him. And so if we look in Revelation 3, He says the same thing. Um, you know, because you said that you're, um, you know, you, you, you're rich and you don't need anything, you don't realize it. So, so the counsel is, you know, this is wisdom speaking, to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich. This isn't th something that you can get with money. This is something that you get by coming and, and fellowshipping with, with Jesus, that you get by, by coming to the word, coming to the water. It's, it's the same concept of, of coming to Jesus um, um, and white garments that you might be clothed. And you know, these, these white garments, um, are, are the righteous acts of the saints. Um, and, you know, well, where are you pulling that from? But it's actually uh, said here, um, which I, I'm having a hard time finding it right now. Um, uh, in in, verse, in uh, Revelation 7, uh, um, 14, it talks about the... Uh, uh, the angel actually tells John, and the white garments are the righteousness of the saints. Um, and I, I can't find it right now, but um, anyway, so, you know, be clothed in righteousness. Um, when, when you come to the waters, when you come to Jesus, you are um, you're, you're taking your, your um, the, the thing that you have that's, um, the, the only thing that you have that, that's worth anything, and that's your life. And you're pouring it out at the feet of Jesus. And, and you're saying, you know, here, take my best, take me, that's all I have to offer. And that's the act of buying this gold that's refined in the fire. That's the act of buying these white garments that you might be clothed when he clothes you, clothes you with, with righteousness. Um, that the shame of our nakedness would not be revealed. And then that's the act of anointing our eyes with eye salve, where our eyes are healed from the, the things that we see. You know, um, Jesus said, it's not what goes in your mouth that, that corrupts you, you know, when he was kind of um, 
He says something funny. Don't you guys have it, know by now that what you eat, you just go to the bathroom and leave it behind and it doesn't become part of you? It's what comes in, it's what proceeds from your mouth that, that defiles you. It, that's your heart. And by the same token, what comes into your eyes? You know, your eyes are the window of your soul. And that's what comes into your heart. Um, and so, you know, we need to clean our eyes, um, heal them because they're sick. Um, and, you know, have you ever sat on top of a mountain, a hill or whatever, and looked out over a vista and, you know, seen, seen a really beautiful view? Well, um, we were uh, looking at this um, a couple weeks ago, and um, I just really got the impression that, you know, God's saying that it, you really need to see this view because it's, it's, it's beautiful. Um, but you can't do that if your eyes are broken. So, um, come to Jesus, and not just on your salvation experience, you know, when what we, we call what the day that we're born again, and then always look back to it and say, I remember that one day, way back when, when I went to Jesus, but wow, that was really neat, and it's just been downhill from there. But, you know, that's, that's a horrible um, expression, you know, it should be that I remember today, I went to Jesus again, and he was, he lifted me higher. And then the next day, I went to Jesus again, daily. And so, uh, you know, I was, I was um, during this song, uh, this is how we overcome. Uh, you have turned my morning into dancing, and you have turned my sorrow into joy. Um, uh, there's. I actually think that the uh, the the you know it, it's a neat song saying this is how I overcome and you know, I like the rhythm and everything, but I believe that that is how we overcome by praising God. And so even that very refrain of this is how I overcome is the act of overcoming. Uh, and so. I wanted to develop this idea of, uh, you know, praising God is the act of overcoming. So I, uh, I, I went to the Psalms just this morning. I was flipping through to try to find a, a good psalm that would illustrate that, and I couldn't pick one out. Every single one. You know, there's 150 of them in there. I mean, how many examples do we need before we understand? But uh, I think my, I think the, the two that I settled on, I had to pick two, because uh, I think they go together, are, um, and, and I'll just go through this, and then I'll flip it back over to you. The, uh, uh, I want to start in Psalm 22. 